how much would $25,000 invested and spread out equally amongst Apple, Broadcom, NVIDIA, Amazon, and Tesla just two years ago? How much would that be worth today? Well, stay tuned so you can find out the answer. Hey, listen, it's what's going on, everybody? This is uh, Kenyon Hackworth again, back with another video. Asking you again, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and share the information because we want to build this generational wealth together. In 2022, I made a video talking about don't miss this lifetime stock buying opportunity. The reason I did that is because this is the it was the first year, uh, not counting COVID, the first year since 2008 where we engaged in a bear market. That means that uh, the market was down greater than 20%. So it took 14 years to get to that particular point. I don't know when the next one can happen. It can, it can start next week or next month or next year. Or it could be five years from now. Uh, either way, when, brought, when there's a bear market, the stock prices start dropping and things get a lot cheaper. So people are able to buy shares for a lot cheaper prices. I had a friend who had, $25,000 that he had saved that was in a savings account in a credit union for like four or five years. So I asked him, I said, how much is that $25,000 worth that you put in there five years ago? $25,000. I said, look, saving money is losing money because your money has to be growing. If not, you're losing value just based off of inflation. So he said, well, I, I'm I'm not quite sure where to invest it. So I said, well, I can tell you exactly what to do. So I met up with him. I went down for a football game. Now his time was uh, absolutely perfect because you can't get any better timing than this because he bought almost at the, the very tail end of a bear market. So it was $25,000. He put $5,000 each in Apple, Broadcom, NVIDIA, Amazon, and Tesla. So how much is that worth today? In just two years, that $25,000 has grown to be over $92,000 because of the power of compounding. There's no greater force than the power of compounding. So I'm going to go through these equally so you can kind of look at what each particular company participated in as far as what they brought to the table in this $25,000. You see Apple at the top. Uh, initially, we bought 34 shares. Everything on the one, two, three, the first three columns stays the same from when it was purchased. It's the number of shares that was purchased, the cost or the price per share, and the, and the market value at that particular point in time on November uh, the 10th, 2022. So each one of them were roughly around $5,000, give or take a couple of cents. But you can see that by November 10th, of 24, Apple, the stock price now, Apple had grown from 144.71 to 226.96. So that original 5,000 was now $7,841.45 for a total unrealized gain of $2,841.46. That means it had grown by 56.83%. Broadcom, ticker symbol AVGO, Broadcom did a 10 uh, recently along with nvidia recently did a 10 for one stock split so that was 9.97 share, shares increased to 99.728 now when you do a stock split the stock price is reduced by the same factor so it'll be the equivalent of 99.72 shares uh, at the cost of 50 dollars and 13 cent which when it originally was 501 dollars but now the price is $183.64. So that $5,000 is now worth $18,314.05 for a total unrealized gain of $13,314.08 for a growth in two years of 266.28%. NVIDIA, what I, could, what I call the greatest wealth building stock currently of the last decade, went from uh they did a 10 for one split as well so those 32 shares increased to 320 shares um and the this the price if you divide that by 10 instead of 155 dollars is more like 15 dollars and 59 cents or 60 cents per share 
The cost of NVIDIA on November 10th was $147.63. So in two years, that $5,000 grew to $47,321.41 for a total unrealized gain of $42,321.48 or a growth of 846% in two years. 846% in two years. That is absolutely phenomenal. Amazon. The price of Amazon on November 10th, $208.18. So the current value, that $5,000, grew to $10,793.45. So it doubled. Uh, unrealized gain, $5,793.46. For a total growth of 115.87%. Uh, Tesla, now Tesla had done nothing really for two years. It didn't really do anything until Donald Trump won the election. <laughs> That's funny how that works. So the price was somewhat stagnant. You know, a few about a month or so ago, the price was in the lower 200s. But now it's $321.22 for a current market value of $8,559.84. And total unrealized gain of $3,559.84 for a growth of 71.20%. So you see that current market value of all these collectively, $92,830.26 for a total growth of unrealized gain of $67,830.32 uh, for a growth percentage in two years of 271.32%. Now, the uh, I label it the category unrealized gains because the gains are unrealized that means that there's just the growth you're not they're not realized until you sell it so that means now this is in a regular brokerage account you're not taxed on unrealized gains so that's sixty seven thousand dollars of growth is not taxable because you're not taxed on unrealized gains he didn't have to stick this money into some retirement account that he doesn't have access to until he's 60 years old to get the benefits of it he was able to get the benefits of the unrealized gain which is not taxable in until you sell but if you own great businesses you can he can own these businesses for the next decade and the growth of these businesses because they're all great businesses you know people people have you so afraid to buy individual stocks because enron went out of business or the the other ones that i, I can name sears kmart tars r us blockbuster circuit city hh H. greg payless Called Polaroid, Kodak, Xerox. All these companies went out of business, so they, they use this fear to get you to, to, uh, to number one, to control your money. You, you, you're you not smart enough to do it, so you got to turn your money over to me so I can hit you with all these fees. And you can't buy individual stocks because it's too risky. You know, you can't buy, you know, you know people will push their mutual funds on you and say, this is why I don't buy a single stock. But you're not buying a single stock. <laughs> This in this in this particular scenario, he bought a group of five outstanding businesses, ownership in five outstanding businesses that he can own, not stocks that you have to worry about the stock price going up and down and and how how the uh, the market goes and how it correlates with the stock price going up and down. So all these things are big scenarios and just how things function throughout that time frame. Now, if we look at the the standpoint of just how these companies perform let's say in 2022 now if he had bought these companies uh, invested at same twenty five thousand dollars in january of 2022 by december of 2022 the value of that twenty five thousand dollars would have been fourteen thousand seven hundred seventy one dollars so the, the portfolio would have decreased by 40.92%. So it had a, a negative return of about 41%. Why? Because it was a bear market. Amazon was down 49.62% in 2022. Apple was down 26.40%. NVIDIA was down 50.27%. Broadcom was down 13.27%. And Tesla was down 65.0%. Uh, uh, 3%. Now, does that mean that he should freak out and be like, oh my God, I got to sell all my stocks before they go to zero, you know, because the stocks can go to zero? No, you recognize that you own good businesses. And yes, you might have bought them at a the point where they were high, 
But as Phil Fisher said, all great businesses bought and held long enough will always show a profit. Now, let's say he had bought it in January of, of and endured this 40% decline in 2022 and never sold and just sat down and never did anything. Today, that $25,000 would still be worth $51,814 um dollars because in 2023 the return was 108 percent and so far this year it's 67.93 percent and you see that column over here that's income that's the dividends that are being paid that is the only amount of taxable income that he would have in this account you get taxed on your dividends but that's the only taxable income in this account the unrealized gain is not taxable you can hold this that that twenty five thousand can grow to two million and you're not taxed on anything but the dividends and because amazon doesn't pay a dividend tesla doesn't pay a dividend nvidia and apple and not even broadcom all have dividends of less than one and a half percent so the dividends are very very small compared to the growth and he has access to his money he doesn't have to put all his money in, in a retirement account just to get tax deferred growth now if you if you're buying mutual funds or if you're buying and selling stocks yeah because you're gonna uh, create taxable events the reason why I, I explained to him that you you don't want to sell because the worst thing you can do for compounding this wonderful power of compounding is to interrupt it unnecessarily by selling or by moving money around all you got to do is just own the businesses these are businesses, established businesses that are run by really intelligent people. So what if if one of the businesses goes down 20% or 30%? You've already seen that it can happen. It happened once. You know, NVIDIA was down 70% in 2008. It happened once. Guess what? It, it will not surprise me that in the coming years of NVIDIA or Broadcom or even Tesla is down 50% again in a year. It happens. But these create tremendous buying opportunities for the savvy investor who realizes that a great company, when the stock price depreciates, that means that the company is selling for cheaper. You can buy shares of these wonderful businesses for cheaper prices and just own them. Just all you got to do is own the business. You don't have to make investing so complicated and difficult. People want to confuse you and tell you there is. Listen. There's no, 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 no advisor is going to tell you to, uh, that you can buy and hold a stock, you know, for 20 years because they're going to bring up the, all the companies I named earlier that went out of business as a reason why you can't do it. But a great business can be held. Like I've owned, I've held, I've owned Amazon, and Apple now for nine years. There's no reason for me to believe that I'm not going to own it for another 11, that I'm not going to own it for, for 20 years or another 20 years after that, or probably another 20 years after that. You know, as long as the businesses remain fundamentally sound, the idea of me selling out, all I could do is hurt it. I mean, all he all he could do if he started trying to trade and sell and buy and this and buy low, sell high and move money around. All he can do is hurt his results, period, period. I wouldn't be averaging 20 percent rate of return in the last eight years if I was constantly buying and selling stocks. By good businesses that are run by good management, that have some competitive advantage that I can just own the business. The objective is what you have to do uh, is you have to identify the good businesses from the bad businesses. There are characteristics uh, of bad businesses and, and the companies, unless there's something going on like them cooking the books or they're, they're falsifying data. Most of the time, you will see a company decline because it declines over uh, 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 over decades. Macy's has been declining for a long time. Walgreens has been declining for a long time. You know, if you are an investor, you would know, look, I need to get out of these businesses. They're not they're no longer what they used to be. When a business changes, you can change with it. It's, but as long as they're good, you can participate and you can have this tremendous power of compounding working in your favor that is building your wealth and you don't have to do anything you don't have to do anything every time somebody moves money around for you and in the name of uh, rebalancing or we need to uh, make sure we fit in this asset allocation model or whatnot they get paid off of you and your portfolio suffers your portfolio suffers in the long run so here's an example of what 
$25,000, invested at the bottom of a bear market into five great companies and just and just holding them what they can grow into. There's a lot of potential, a lot of great companies. You don't, you don't have to be right about every single one. I've not been right about every single company. But when you find a great one, you better hold on for dear life. Just hold on to it. And you can sleep well. So the reason why I was able to recommend, because I own these five, I own these same companies. So I'm not going to say, hey, you should go buy XYZ if I don't own it. And I don't spend, and you don't have to spend time just staring at your computer or looking at candlesticks and say, oh, I need to sell it now because it's going up and I'm going to buy it back. Why are you doing this rope? I'm going to sell it and then buy it back cheaper. You don't have to do any of that. All you got to do is just own the business. You have good management that's running the business. Tim Cook has been the CEO of Apple since 2011, so double digit years. Hawk Tan has been the CEO of Broadcom since 2006. He's been running the company for 18 years. Jensen Wong has been running NVIDIA since, since he founded it. And, 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 and since it became public in 1997, over 30 years. So you have the same management running the business. They have really good balance sheets for the most part. They have really good balance sheets. All you got to do is own them. All you got to do is own them. Ownership is the key. Just own great businesses, buy them, allow your money to compound, and, you know, let's build this generational wealth. Let's build this generational wealth. You can cut out the middleman. I have. All right. So, there it is. 25000 invested in these five companies. Now you see how much your money can grow over time. Now, if you invested the same 25000 a day, you probably wouldn't, you, your money wouldn't, I would guarantee it won't grow to the same 92000 <laughs> in, in over the next two years that's all because of when it was bought at the bottom of a bear market but hey now that does not mean let me say say this make this caveat this, this one last point that does not mean that you should run out and buy these five companies today i would say that as a as a caveat i own them i'm not selling them i'm a, i will continue to own them but that does not mean you should run out and buy put twenty five thousand dollars into these five companies or maybe you can. I don't know. Anyway, have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Live, learn, build generational wealth. Set your children up for the future and your grandchildren as well. Change your family tree. Change your family tree. Wealth is built over time. This is no get-rich-quick scheme. His his returns are surpasses what most people would get, but this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. You're not trying to hit the jackpot by identifying this one stock. To put all your money into you're buying great businesses you're owning them you're leaving alone leaving them alone you're letting management run the business and you're reaping the rewards of being a shareholder all right have a great day i will talk to you soon next time all right take care peace